Just want to tell y'all out there, DIY Auto School is the place to be for all you blue collar American son of a bitch and bastards to click on that to subscribe button and do it right. Subscribe now and be a winner in life at DIY Auto School. My friend Pete's going to show you how to do it. My friend Pete is going to take you through step one, two, three, all the way up until the end. Don't let the big let boy the big stick, boy it, in stick your ass. it in your ass. Take it that Take finger and bam it. Bam it. Till the son of a bitch won't come, bitch out, won't no come out no more. Do it yourself. Auto school's going to teach you how to do it. And be proud of what the hell you do. Subscribe on that little button up there in that corner and make yourself feel proud that you say, I can do it right. This is Sam Slam straight out of Miami, and I'm telling you to get her done and get her done right. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie. The Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. got our pieces removed and you can see just by looking at this that uh, this car was wrecked whatever car it came off of so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hammer dolly these now when I say hammer dolly I'm gonna go ahead and straighten this out I'm gonna take this crease out right here and then I'm gonna go ahead and straighten all these edges up so we can go ahead and use these on the car Now what I'm going to do to straighten this out, I'm going to use my body hammer and my dolly. Now I'm going to go ahead and use this piece of wood to pound on so it'll, see how loud that is? It's a little bit different there. But we're going to start right here on the inside and we're going to try to get rid of all this crushed up dented fucking shit here. And this is a situation that you have when you're using used parts, but the deal is, is to buy this little section here you would have to buy the whole fucking roof probably. I'm not saying that for 100% fact, but I'm thinking that's how it is since it is part of the roof. Uh, so this is actually a good deal to use this right here. So let's start out by taking our body hammer and we're going to go ahead and start hammering out that crushed in dented area. So, we're going to go ahead and Take it a step further, and we're going to heat that bitch up and use our hammer to go ahead and try to mold that back to the way it's supposed to be. Heat that up to make it easier to pound out. Motherfucker! Just gotta heat it up just enough to make it soft. make it flat. Now if you don't have a cutting torch you can also use a uh, propane torch and that'll work just as good. Now this is quite a job doing this. Uh, when you're dealing with a fucking piece like this. It's a fucking job. And now, if you 
you look back here, and I'm going to be real quick with that because it's hot, you can see that we are pounding that out and forming it back into the shape that it once was. So now that that's done, now that we got that pretty much almost where we want it, uh, we got to go around all these edges here and straighten all that out. So by using my block of wood, that's going to let me sit that where I need it. And then I see on this edge right here, uh, we're going to have to go ahead and use our pliers to roll that back around where we want it. Uh, this is where our cowling actually meets the windshield. This is our area right here. Uh, if we were looking at this, you would look at it like that. This being the windshield post and then the cowling going around that way. So we're just going to go ahead and use our pliers to kind of get this to mold around how it's supposed to be. Because if you remember right, this was a hard area to remove because of all of the spot welds that ended up in the corner here. Plus it had all that brass, bronze shit going on. And it looks like it's turned out to be a pretty good piece after we have straightened it out and got it back in shape the way that we need it to be. I think our corner is ready to go ahead and put to the side and ready for use. And then of course if you look right here, here is our hinge post uh, section that we need to clean up and get ready to use. And also in this area right here it's the same situation, it's dented. Uh, so this car that this came off of, I am presuming this was wrecked pretty hard to crush all that in. But the reason that we need to keep all that is because this is the section right here. See this right here? This section right here goes up inside the uh, uh, windshield post. So this would go inside the windshield post and the windshield post roof panel would fit on top of it. So we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing and straighten all this out and get it back in shape the way it's supposed to be. And when you're straightening this stuff out, it kind of molds itself into place. Uh, basically all you're doing is flattening it out. So as far as like, it, let's say this piece here was crushed like you just saw, I just used my pliers and straightened it out. And then as you install it, you can go ahead and hammer and dolly it and fit it in place like it's supposed to be. But before we do all that, we want to go ahead and try to get it as nice and clean as we can as we go around. Look at this edge right here, how jagged it is. We're going to go ahead and straighten that out. And then when I took this off, I noticed that there was two welds right here. So we'll grind all that down when we get to that procedure. We're still straightening this out. We got to go ahead and straighten this out. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat my process uh, using my cutting torch. But before we do that, let's try to do it without the torch. I don't think that it's going to straighten out like we want, but let's try it anyway. Well, looky there. We don't need the torch. We can go ahead and do this. And now, I think that, uh, let me get this straight, this is kind of funky looking down here. So now that we have removed and straightened our pieces out, the next step I will do, I'll come back with my grinder, uh, my little hand grinder, let me get that and show that to you, where the fuck did it go? Okay, yeah, right here. Alright, so I'm going to take my little grinder, I'll clean all this up. I'm going to go ahead and if you look real close you can already see that I went ahead and put some rust preventive paint on the inside of this but we're going to have to redo that and I also did this side as well on this but we're going to come back and clean all this up and when we, be, when we come back we're going to go ahead and install these pieces and you're going to see how it's done. Uh, this is kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. This is not a domino effect. This is not 
uh, uh, a money pit. Yes, it is a money pit. It's a big fucking money pit. But I would call this job the jigsaw puzzle. Due to the fact that it's taken all these related pieces. You see this goes right here. And then, of course, this would go on top of here. Do you see what we're going through here? We're going through layers and layers and layers of bullshit to get this fucking car to actually work properly. Let me clean all this up, get it ready to install, and then we'll be back to finish building our left-hand corner of the front end of our car that we call Frankenstein the Rustang. side panel you can see the side panels been installed I also went ahead and tech screwed everything together right here if we go down here you can see right there as well and just random places all the way around the vehicle itself so this is not welded together I want to say that again this is not welded this is all held together with tech screws you can see here's a couple of them sticking out right here and the situation you have is that when you're doing a job like this, when it's a big fucking mess just like what you're looking at back there, you don't want to weld anything together until everything is in its place. My fucking safety glasses are going to fall off. Uh, that's another important issue is safety. Always remember your safety glasses and your safety gloves when you are working. So if we look down inside the car, you can see that we got our pieces sitting here. They've been cleaned off and ready for installation. Let's go ahead and start removing everything that needs to be removed. Now I've already started. You can see where I drilled out the spot welds here and here. And I've also bent this back because if you look right here, this is the piece that goes up underneath our post right here. If you look right there, you can see there it is right there. We need to get that bitch out of there. And it ends right here. You can see where it ends right there. You can see that. So I had to go ahead and cut those three spot welds. And what I'm going to do very carefully, I'm going to go ahead and pull that out of there uh, the easiest way possible. And hopefully we won't have any problems. So to go ahead and remove that piece right there, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and use a chisel and a hammer. And I'm going to try to stay away from using uh, uh, the air chisel because now we're getting to the final finesse stage of doing this job and we don't want to fuck anything up using an air chisel so see if we can take our uh, hand chisel here and it's not working out too good it's not doing the job that we want because we got to get this piece out of here we got to get it loose and I'm thinking it's because these spot welds are not drilled out all the way. So what we're going to do, we're going to use our burring tool and we're just going to clean around the edges of where our uh, holes are drilled just to kind of get that loose. And it looks like we're going to have to get our fucking air chisel on this bitch because it's not breaking loose. Fuck. Can't fucking believe this mess. And that's what I'm talking about right there. What the problem was, is that when I drilled these out, obviously the drill bit that I was using wasn't big enough, and there was still a small slag of metal stuck onto there holding all that together. you got to understand that these spot welds are super, super strong. So when we go back to weld this thing, we got to make sure that we weld them just as strong or stronger. And of course, here comes our piece from the inside. Just like that. 
And there's our piece right there. That's the piece that goes up inside. That's taken out. I'm going to go ahead and take my hammer. I'm going to pound that back in place because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this piece right here and I'm going to start eyeballing it how I want that and that's where it's going to set right there. That's, that's where it's going to be. That's the situation we have if you look at it right here. Just like that right there, you can see that this is our piece. This is actually this piece right here. And what we're doing, this is our windshield post. We're coming down and we're going to have to splice it into the old one. So we're going to have to take this one and kind of start mimicking it up so we can fit it together. So what I'll do is I'll take my magic marker and I'm going to line this up with this piece right here. This is the piece that it lines up with right here. And it basically fits just like that. So we're going to go ahead and line that up. And then we're going to find us a nice place where we can cut this section off. And it looks like it's going to be right here. Just like that. Let's go ahead and check that one more time. Let's go ahead and come down just a hair. What I'm trying to do, I'm trying to miss the drip rail right here. I want to try to miss that from cutting it. And then we'll come straight across just like this. And we'll cut that whole section out right there just like that. So to make sure that we have a nice straight line, we don't really care if it's like straight from one end to the other, but we want to make sure that it's a straight line. We're going to go ahead and take our yellow tape. Uh, some of you are familiar with this. If you're just stepping in to watch this video set on this Mustang, we use yellow tape to make sure that we get a nice straight line that we can guide ourselves instead of, you know, hand drawing it out. Tape is good for making lines, and that's what the fuck we're doing right here, just like that. I'm going to go ahead and take all this section, take it off, throw it away, get rid of it, and then we'll be able to uh, mimic this piece in to what we have on the vehicle already. And before we go any further, I just want to tell you that this is an extreme, in detail, video set of how to restore your rusted, rotted vehicle that you might be working on at home. So all the steps that I'm showing you, it's not just replacing brand new parts and welding it here and doing this and doing that. You're catching tech tips of certain things and stuff that's going to answer a lot of fucking questions throughout this video series. So if this seems a little boring to you and you want to skip through it and, you know, uh, paddle your way up to the end faster than you really want to, I suggest that you don't do that and watch everything because just the tidbits of learning about the tape, for instance, or taking the pliers to straighten this out, or maybe using this piece of wood that we used as a dolly to hammer and dolly out this piece right here that was fucked up. There's a lot of tech tip stuff going on over here besides watching me fuck up, cuss, holler, and scream. Just bear with me, watch, listen, and learn, and you too will be able to do this all by yourself with nobody showing you how to do it, nobody fucking giving you uh, advice on the side saying, this guy told me that you should do it this way. You know, I hate when people say that to me. I fucking hate it. Well, this guy said you should do it that way. Yeah, fuck you! doing a job for you. I'm going to do it my fucking way because that's the way that I think it should be and that's the way that it will fucking be. Don't come to my shop and say, this guy told me it should be done like that. Well, this guy said, and you should do it that way. I don't give a fuck. Watch the fucking videos, get the little tidbits of information, and learn how to do the shit yourself.
say, that guy said you should do it like that. Well, I talked to this guy and he said you're doing it wrong. Fuck you. I don't see you fucking doing it. And that's the section that we're going to keep right there and use. We're not going to throw that away. That's going to be a reinforcement uh, piece that we are going to use for our vehicle. But right now what we got to do is get this piece to work with that piece over there. And this is where it starts getting a little tricky because this lip right here actually has to go under all this mess right here. So what we're going to have to do is loosen this screw right here and then we'll pry this up and slide it under. Now before we do that, what I'm going to do is I am actually going to cut some of this off of here and I don't want to cut it too high where these won't be together. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get these to butt together for me uh, the best way possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut some of it off, but I'm going to still leave a little bit on there, just enough so we can go ahead and fine tune cut it up. We're going to go ahead and just basically cut this corner off right here, all right, not this line. We want to leave enough meat so we can trim as we go to cut it off. All right, so now we just got that cut off. We'll go ahead and uh, throw that away. We're not going to keep it. And then we'll go ahead and start fitting our piece inside where it goes. You can see where it goes right there. And this actually goes underneath, which would slide underneath there. I'm going to go ahead and take my crow's foot and stick it down in the hole. This is our lineup hole for these, all these panels to line up. And now these panels are loose. And then we'll go ahead and pry that up like that and start fitting this piece underneath that right there. Get it fucking high enough. Just like that. Alright. Now that we have this almost fit in place, what we want to do is again go ahead and cut. We want to cut some more off of there. We don't want to cut a lot, but we want to cut a little bit, and we're just going to keep cutting a little bit until we finally get it in there where it's supposed to go. We're just going to take a little bit off at a time, but we're going to use this nice piece, clean piece of tape to get a nice straight line that we're looking for. And another thing we got to be careful with is the guy's dashboard. We don't want to cut the fucking dashboard off as we're cutting the fucking windshield post off. And that's a good tech tip that you just learned right there. Alright, so now we got a nice, nice clean cut going on there. Let's take our piece. Where the fuck did it go? We're going to slide it up in there again. And now we're going to see what the fuck is going on. Do you see what we're doing here? Do you understand what's going on? Look at that right there. That looks pretty fucking good. Just like that. Matter of fact, I would say that that is probably where we're going to go with it. So we just learned that taking our time and cutting it two to three times instead of one big giant one is going to give us the fit that we're looking for. Let's get the hinge post, put that bitch in place, and see where the fuck we end up. Now, if all fits well and everything goes good, uh, we should be able to put this on with ease. Like I said, this is an all-day job. Now, keep in mind that this piece right here, that would be one piece. That's a one piece, but what we're doing, we're going to box it all in to fit. So I'm going to take that piece out. And then I'm going to take our hinge post, not our rocker panel. We're going to slide that bitch up in there where it goes. Remember, it went behind here, so we'll slide that up in there. This is going to go under this and on top of the rocker. We're going to fit that in there, you fucking cocksucker. It's in there and then it fucking came out. There it is, right there. Just like that. Okay, now that's fit in place. And we want to go ahead to line this up just to eyeball it. We want to go ahead and get that where it's nice and tight. And then we're going to go ahead and clamp this side down. Make sure it's in place. 
Now that that's on there, let's go ahead and slide this on top and see where it ends up. Like that. Just like that. So what this is telling me is that this isn't lining up. This isn't lining up properly. And it's telling me that this piece has to go in more. It looks like this is lined up down here, but uh, up here on the top, it looks like it's got to go in more. And if you look right there, you can see what I'm talking about. So what we're going to do is we are going to take our uh, fucking mallet. This is a plastic sand filled mallet. And I got this clamped at the bottom and I'm going to go ahead and take that. And I'm going to try to get this up in there where it all lines up over here. And of course I got the worst fucking vice grip that I have. Don't you fucking hate it when this happens? Don't you fucking hate it? when this little fucking foot flips over and then you just don't have time to stop right now. You don't have time to stop and fix it because it's a bitch. It's a fucking bitch! Getting this in there is not an easy fucking door. Now our vice grips have popped off. We've got to go ahead and put those back where they go. Hold that bitch in place. And one more thing you notice, I'm not screwing anything yet. I don't want to screw nothing because we're not even there yet. We're not even to the screwing part of the job. And that right there, I'm looking at it and I can see that all of our spot weld holes are lining up right where we want them. So I'll go ahead and take my vice grips and I'm going to vice grip that right there in place. We have came to a stop. We can't do any more. I'm sorry. I would like to show you how to fix this and I am going to show you how to fix it but not today. I'm not going to show you today because before we go any further we have got to have some hinges because we are actually going to hang the door on the fucking car. We're going to go ahead and hang the door on the car to make sure that this is in the proper position, you might say, the proper position before we go any further. When I get them door hinges, I will be back. And we will finish this corner out as you can see it. And you can also see that it is a big fucking nightmare job. Replacing this post right here is a fucking nightmare. Go back in the videos and look at what the fuck they did to it before my friend Pete got a hold of it. Because when we get done with it, you won't even know this fucking thing was ever replaced. You're going to think that that was the original factory, original fucking piece of shit called a Rustang. I called it a piece of shit. That's right. I sure fucking did. We'll be back. And I think it's looking good. Looking fucking good.